David, it's lovely to see you here at Collectomania today. If there was an award for world's worst wedding planner, it'd be sitting on your shelf at home right now. Yes. <laughs> what did you think when you first got the script for The Red Wedding? I thought this is going to be fun, but I knew I knew Walder from um, the season one or the first series, and um, so I knew what he was about, and I knew he was uh, a ruthless man, but you know he exists in a ruthless world, and uh, it's the kind of world where if someone makes a promise, they'd better keep it, otherwise there'll be some kind of retribution. And so I mean, he is. He is calculating and he's hard, but he, he has to be. It's a harsh environment that the series exists in. Um, uh, and it's, it's kind of kill or be killed. And, and I, when I think about it, I think, well, if, if someone promises to marry your daughter and then reneges on the deal, it, um, it, it tends to, uh, the, the word starts to get around that you're... Uh, that you're a soft touch and you, you can be mucked around with and he, he doesn't want to be that man so I mean his um, his methods are probably a bit harsher than <laughs> so he's, uh, he, he wouldn't win the uh, any tact and diplomacy award certainly but he's a hard man he's got all these kids that he wants to get married off because they're all on the payroll I mean you've got about 37 40 odd children and uh, a lot of daughters and uh, he, he just has to get them out of the house and get them married off and so and they're clearly finding it very hard and so um, I can kind of actually I can't say I can sympathize with him of course not but um, it's uh, it's if you're playing someone like that you can't just say okay it's, this is just an evil guy you've got to find take into account the environment and the background of the whole story and uh, why he does what he does and but he is he is a very very ruthless man and great fun to play and I I enjoyed every I, I probably enjoyed it a little bit too much actually than is healthy for one <laughs> but um, yeah so when when I got the script for season three I thought wow this is going to be great fun but we had a terrific director called uh, an American director called David Nutter who directed Emmy Award winning episodes of The Sopranos and many other things uh, in America and, and so he took a whole week to film like the massacre scene I hope I'm not getting there, there are a few people out there who who haven't seen it yet and, and say I don't want to know because I've got it taped but um, I've had a lot of uh, quite interesting responses to it you know from what are the kind of best reactions you had so far oh people just saying uh, I can't forgive you for what you've done you know and, and uh, people winding their car windows down and um, well I won't repeat really <laughs> but it's all in kind of in a good humor it's from real die-hard fans who who've seen some of their favorite characters just get wiped out like you know it's like the St. Valentine's Day massacre and um, and, and I, we, I say we took a whole week to film the scene because there were lots of there was lots of blood about and a lot of um, arrows and, uh, and, and, and knives and it was just a bloodbath and I I had to watch it for a whole week and just looked like I was relishing it, you know, and... Uh, I mean, what was your reaction when you saw it on the screen? What did, how did you react to The Red Wedding? Well, I just thought that David had directed it so well and I thought, wow, this... He's, he's got to come back, this guy. I'm still waiting to hear, but I'm, I, I, I gather he does come back at some point, so I'll be, I'll be ready, but um, I think there's some divine retribution waiting for Walder somewhere along the way. Or not, maybe it might be uh, one of those things where... Because I think what my kids said was, um, if if that can happen to the Starks, it can happen to anyone. So it's not a sorry, it's not a, a story where you think, oh, the, the the good guys will win through in the end, and they can't get rid of so and so and so. And so. It means any all the characters. So it, it adds that element of suspense to the whole story. If um, if anyone can be just disappeared at, at, you know, at a moment's notice. I mean, what do you think's left for the stocks now? There's only a few of them left, aren't there? There's Aya and there's Bran and Rickon. Oh, as well as Walder would say, I, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's got his own problems. He's got a lot of daughters to marry off, hasn't he? He's got what, sorry? He's got his own problems, a lot of daughters to marry he off. He has, he's got a lot on his plate, yes, yes. And, uh, and an awful lot of cleaning up to do. Yeah. You, you know, so, you know. Big cleaning up bill for that. You need some professional services, I think. Oh, yeah, sorry. I think and probably Dino Rod or something need to be called in. <laughs> sorry, that's product placement. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, Clive Russell, we spoke to you recently, he plays Blackfish. He must take the most appropriately timed toilet break in any TV show ever, I think, yeah. in Game of Thrones. Yeah. And he said to us that you did an amazing job because you had to, as you say, you're filming every week, and you had to do that scene where you introduce your daughters and the various members of your family over and over and over again for all the different angles. How was that? Because there's so well, many names to remember. That was, uh, we did that, I think, in a day, and I did 70 takes. It's, uh, it was a four-page speech and that was my first time I'd come back since series one so I thought oh thank you very much. Um, <laughs> so we uh, we went over it and over it because uh, of course it has to be covered by different shots on Every, everybody has to be covered. A lot of people in the room so the camera a lot of camera setups and um, I asked the continuity uh, girl afterwards I said how many times did I do that today? She said 70 so so yes, a lot of names to remember, but that's what that's what we do, and that's uh, I've done enough Shakespeare and stuff, and over the years, you know that what you've got to do is just learn it well before you get into the studio. Don't leave it till the studio day, otherwise you, you've got plenty of other stuff to think about because there's there's cameras and cables and other people and. There's, you, you, if, if you leave it to the last minute to learn it, you can be, you can be in trouble. So I, I always try and get it all under my belt before I before I go into the studio. So uh, not only will I I know what I'm doing and who I'm saying it to, that, but I can I can have a bit of fun with it because you can. It's more it's more relaxing when you feel confident about the words. Not that I felt totally confident because I still had a few. <laughs> I still forgot the odd daughter now and again, but we just. We just did this again, you know. I think that's entirely forgivable, given the number of daughters you've got, I must yeah. say. Yes, yes. And uh, we had one of my daughters um, fainted during the filming because uh, the heat from all the candles, there must have been about 100 candles in there, big ones, and uh, it got a bit warm. And, you know, as you see in my costume, is, there's a lot of fur and leather about. And, uh, yeah, so it was... It was we're all ready for a bit of fresh air, actually. Yeah, I was going to say you need people with fans cooling you down, don't you? That's right, yes, yes, yeah. Talking about fans, a different kind of fan, were you surprised or how surprised were you at the kind of level of dedication that Game of Thrones fans have? Because, for example, in The Red Wedding, you've got Will Champion, who's driven for Coldplay, wanting just an extra role in the show, haven't you? Yes, yes. Well, um, I, I had no idea until he was in the room and someone said, you know, that is up in the top gallery, and I thought, and he'd taken time off from the band rehearsals, permission to come over. And I, I don't know if he, um, someone said he, he, he paid for the trip himself. He just wanted to be in it as an extra. So um, the director said, well, we, if you're going to be up in the gallery, we might as well give you a drum. So he, he, he played the drums. And for, for, for serious watchers, you know, he's there with his beard. And he was such a lovely guy. He just wanted to be in Game of Thrones, and we were all very honoured, you know. But, uh, it's incredible. I mean, they're great fans, including Will, obviously. I mean, what would you say you need to survive in Game of Thrones? And do you think Will Frey has got what it takes? Um, well, I hope he has, because I'd like him to come back a lot more. So I hope he doesn't have uh, an early death or anything. I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. But uh, I think you certainly need. Uh, an amount of ruthlessness and uh, and determination and um, making the right choices and um, siding with the right people and making sure the alliances that you make are the are the right ones because if you if you back the wrong horse you could uh, find yourself headless or whatever. Mm. Talking about striking deaths in the show, obviously we want to see you back as Walder Frey, but if you had to go out in the show, and we've seen some amazing death scenes, how would you like to meet your maker on Game of Thrones? I think maybe hung, drawn and quartered. Because <laughs> I've never seen anybody hung, drawn and quartered, um, either, either well, of course, in real life or on film. Um, but there was a lot about, uh, a bit about in, the, in medieval times and, uh, and even later. So I think that would be um, that would be fun. 
But I think it would have to be a lot of CGI because I, I, I wouldn't do that in one take. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It's been lovely to talk to you. Have you got a message for your fans out there who love the show? Oh, well, what can I say? Um, if there's any weddings coming up, I'm available. So um, I promise to behave myself. And if uh, I say to you guys, if as, as long as you turn up, there'll be no trouble, OK? <laughs> <laughs> David, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. you.